All right, hello, what is up, Internet Land? It's your friend Mick O here at Cameravitz HQ in Portland, Oregon. And I'm here with another episode of Workflow Wednesday Live. Uh, this week, we're going to be covering the Hot Codes feature. This is a uh, fairly advanced feature of Photo Mechanic related to code replacements. Um, it was brand newly uh, launched in Photo Mechanic 6. And uh, I'm here to just kind of walk you through it. All right. Hey, Gareth. I see Gareth in the chat saying, good evening, everybody. Hoping you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, I know I am, and I hope you are too, Gareth. Um, so with that, let's uh, start talking about hot codes. Um, I'm going to turn off me and get into photo mechanics so we can look at this. So. All right, so photo mechanic. Um, First of all, let me talk a little bit about what Hot Codes was meant to solve, what problem it was meant to solve. Um, so code replacements, as you know, is a very powerful feature of Photo Mechanic. Uh, and it is used by a number of large photo agencies. Um, in fact, let me call up a sample code replacement file, uh, the way code replacements used to work. So let's go into here. So here is a code replacements file. Uh, I'm going to assume you know the basics of photo mechanic uh, code replacements. Um, but just a real quick refresher. So here's a uh, first column, which is a serial number. And these are multiple code replacements. So every time we see a serial number, we want to replace with uh, either a full name, a last name. we got a title. And a very common thing, so if you're working, say, at the Super Bowl or you, you have a lot of shooters, sending you images, um, you might want to route them to certain editors. So we have here, we just have an editor, we'll say A, B, C, whatever. So this is, uh, this is a very common um, task that agencies like the AP or whatnot would use. So they would uh, get in images, and let's go back into Photo Mechanic here. And say these are images that have come in. Um, I'm an editor. I've got these images all from multiple shooters, right? And I'm working with that code replacement. Let's double check my code replacements. Yep, I have a code replacement with a serial number, so let's do that. So for an image like this, um, brand new, and say I want to apply um, serial caption. So you would have something like this. Image taken by serial, so you see the, the delimiters here. This means there's a code replacement combined with a variable serial number. And then you'll see a number that means a multiple serial uh, code replacement and root to editor. So let's option, hold on, option, click eval. And we can see that, oh, just for my code replacements, it's now replaced the, uh, the name, uh, put their position, uh, route to editor A. So that works great. Um, and that has, that has worked well for a lot of uh, editors as they start writing these filters. But what happens when, uh, you're working with a lot of different shooters and someone is uh, shooting with a camera that maybe doesn't record serial number. Like uh, for a while, the, uh, the Sonys didn't, and I know at some point, um, some Fujis weren't, re weren't recording serial number. So this would cause a lot of problems. So let's go over to like this image and we'll do the same thing. And we say, oh, we have the same. And let's evaluate that, eval. So now we have a bunch of empty code replacements because for whatever reason, this camera didn't record the serial number. So this caused a lot of problems. Um, so this is where hot codes comes in. So let's, uh, you know, this, we would have, it so say you had a lot of images coming in from various shooters and some didn't record the, record the serial number. Um, so this would cause problems. So hot codes is where this comes in. Hot codes really uh, works well when you're working with a lot of different shooters with different cameras. So. Let me call up a new code replacement file um, that has hot codes. Now, here we go. This is a code replacement file that features hot codes, uh, characters, and terminology. Um, the first thing you want to talk about, so where does hot codes like get its data? So in, the, in a normal code replacement, as you see here, this part looks very familiar. This is a code replacement file that it was, the way it looked like before. Uh, however, um, let's... Code replacements allows you to, to define the source of where the code replacements are coming from. So first of all, the slash slash is the is the general comment in a code replacement file, and it's followed by these special characters equals equals, which decide, defines a source, um, sort of a code generator. And we have 
So let's look at serial number or model or file name base because we know that, say here's our list of phot photographers and we have the serial numbers for the camera, but we also know that say Dennis Walker, he prefixes, he's in camera, he prefixes all his files with his initials in the file name. So we go, okay, we know he's got that. So if his camera doesn't have the serial number, we can look at his, um, the pre the file F base, which is the variable for file name base, zero three, which means just the first three characters. And then we have, uh, we can also have model up here. So we know Mick Orlowski was a shooter. Maybe his camera wasn't recording a serial number, but we know he's the only one in my pool shooting with an XE2. Um, so we still have the same columns here, first nest, title, and editor. And we also have this catch-all here. Again, the slash slash and then question mark, question mark um, is the sort of a, a catch-all. So if it goes through and looks for a code replacement that doesn't find anything of these, it will then sort of default to this, which is um, here it says insert either whatever's in the comment field because some cameras record things in the comment. And if, if, that's, if nothing else works, if everything fails, then just report unknown. And we're gonna route that to editor E. So we're like, okay, now what am I talking about? What are these code replacements or what do these hot codes look like? So let's go back into Photo Mechanic. And let's change my code replacements file. Let's get rid of the, the, the old one, remove that. And we'll add a new one, which has the hot codes that I just looked at open. And now let's look at the same picture again and I'll show you what hot codes actually look like when you're using them. So we'll, go, we'll open up the IPTC here and say we have a, here's a caption using hot codes. So now we have photo taken on, you see your normal variables here, but here we have a code which is in square brackets and it just says full and it just says title and in the keywords I have last. So what, what is happening here? Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and apply this, evaluate this. If I hold down option and click eval, we see, oh, here we have everything. Photo, we have the name, photo lead. Um, last name in the keywords. How does so? What is let's go? So let's. Uh, what is happening here? Let's go back to the code replacement file. So whatever um, photo mechanic sees in the square brackets, last name, it goes to the hot codes code replacement file and says, okay, last name. If there's a serial number that matches this, it will re re report bits. If there is nothing into here, the serial number, like it goes through these, it goes first first of all serial number. So let's go through serial number. It founds, oh, it found um, D12345. Let's look at that picture in Photo Mechanic again. And uh, no, so let's. So here we go. This is just looking over here in the corner of the serial number. Oh, it found D12345 was a serial number. So let's go back. It found 12345, goes over to last and found bits. So it goes through all these in order. First it checks all the serial numbers, then it checks the model, then it checks the file name, file name base. So what happens is you get these hot codes allow you to have a lot more flexibility, A, because you can choose to do code replacements based on a whole series of variables, not just serial number. And also with this sort of little catch-all thing at the end, um, it will allow you to um, give sort of like a, a catch-all basket. So let's go back to Photo Mechanic in here real quick. So we have these images. So let's look at this one. This one has no serial. This one has a serial number. This one has no serial number, right? So how would this work? So let's go into and let's try to apply that caption here. Still, we have year for credit, full, title. Last name in the keywords, let's evaluate these. And it's picking up, it's getting Dennis Walker, a photo emeritus, Walker in the keywords. So what happens is it's going, it didn't find anything in serial number, but it did find, um, let's go back into this. This was, so as you see the file name was DJW1234. So that means he had put his, uh, his initials in the file name when he, his in camera, he told his camera to record like, to do the file names with his, his um, initials. So as I go back in here, so that's where all the code replacements come. So, and then it's a, and then it would, um, 
um, add, add the information from from that column. So let's go back in here. So here's uh, so here's a here's a thing where it's like we have no serial number, um, we have we don't know anything. It's just they their file name was DSC, and we can go through here. So let's apply this to all these at once. Uh, we'll do this. And we'll see, let's apply this to selected. So now we can see, here we have my keywords down here, and we can start looking at these, and here we have the caption, all the things, all the information. And then we had that one photo that had uh, no information, but except, oh, we have a photo credit here, Maggie the Murder Hornet. Um, that's, so that was in the comment field for this photo. So even though we didn't know, this was sort of the, the catch-all thing at the end. They said, whatever was in the comment field, throw that into the full name field because nothing else wicked. And uh, there was something in the comment field, and that was Maggie the Murder Hornet. Um, and I can show this as well just by going to I. So if we look at what was comment, let's see about that. Yeah, Maggie. The, so what, for whatever reason, uh, Maggie the Murder Hornet's camera recorded her name in the uh, in the comment field. So that's uh, that's really it. That's the real basics of hot codes. Um, Dennis, the inventor of hot codes, he responded to, because the AP was really asking, because they had a, this was a big problem for them. They were running through a lot of images from a lot of photographers fast, and they were basing it off the serial number, which let's go back to the, um, the old style code replacement file. They were definitely getting a lot of mileage out of just using the serial numbers. But as Sony and whatever cameras started coming out that didn't record the serial numbers in places we'd expect, um, they were their their processes, their workflow was breaking down. So Dennis uh, really put a lot of thought into how this could work to uh, really catch all these exceptions and different things. Um, so yeah, that's uh, in fact. Let me. Oh, and I wanted to also point out that go back into photo mechanic here, and this all works. These hot codes not only work in like captions and things like that, but say I'm now want to move these into. A new thing. It's like, let's go. Okay, so let's use that editor field as I was saying before. And this also works in like F if you're FTPing as well. So I'm going to send these into a folder with the editor. So remember, we had editors in our code replacements file um, A, B, C, D, or A, B, and E in this case. So let's just copy these all to new things. And we go here. Oh, it's created uh, different folders. All the, the the files for, for code, let's close this. The file for editor A, here's the, the folder for editor B, and here's the folder for editor E, sort of the catch-all. This was the unknown photographer who didn't have anything information. So that is, the hot codes enabled that. It, it, uh, if you were just using old school code replacements, this would go nowhere. It wouldn't create a folder because there would be no sort of um, last resort data to put in that field. But because of hot codes, um, we sort of have that. So we said, put everything that we don't have, zero, return editor E for that. And that's that's how that came about. Um, that's it. That's hot codes in a nutshell. Really um, very powerful if you're working with a lot of photographers or a lot of bodies, even if you're just working with different camera bodies and want to apply metadata um, in your, uh, whatever your workflow is that you want to apply it like use these code replacements um any you know you can define anything this could be lens serial numbers this could be um you know lens names whatever so that anything with uh this metadata variable metadata then you can do really advanced code replacements based on those i know it took me a long time to wrap my head around this and i, I really ran through this pretty quickly so if you have any questions or want further explanations let me know uh, let's check the live chat room oh hey what's up david uh david and david is here nick is back as well andy kearns hey how is everyone doing uh, did this make sense to everyone this is uh like i said it's a very advanced feature and it really helps advanced workflows that uh, are using these sort of code replacements with multiple fields um and the uh not only can it i guess the the two biggest um 
benefits of using hot codes is a you can have define a lot of different sources for your code replacements and b with the thing you can now just specify the field just last whereas in the previous in fact, let's uh go back into photo mechanic and let's so let's clear this out and a pre look at you would have to do to get the third column you would have to do serial then hash three and that could be a little bit confusing but when you're using hot codes you can now just use full and it's much easier to remember much easier to type there's a lot uh, less opportunities for typos and a lot less kind of going back and forth looking at the numbers of your columns and whatnot um, so yeah that's uh, that's what hot codes were made for Let's see. David says it makes sense for the scenarios you sketch out. I'm trying to think how it could apply to mine. I know that's. Uh, I was thinking as well. I think that it's really the most helpful for for editors working with multiple photogs. I have not come up with a a way that it would really help me just as a solitary photog yet. But it's always good to have in my back pocket. It's always good to learn more about photo mechanic. Even I, you know, I work for camera bits and have used photo mechanic for many years. I'm still learning new things. And this is the, uh, yeah, this is one of the more mind blowing features. So yeah, Arctic Photo said, this is one of the reasons I love PM. That's right, that's same here. Oh, and David says the uh, the bit about eval to force the load. Yes, that uh, that has worked in Photo Mechanic for a number of versions, even before Photo Mechanic Six. And if you're um, working with a lot of things, if you hold down the Option key, it changes the OK button down here to eval, and it will evaluate um, both your uh, variables and your your code replacements if they haven't already been evaluated. A lot of times, if you're typing in a basic code replacement, it will kind of live as soon as you finish the code replacement with the um, the, the equals equals delimiters it will evaluate um in real time as it were but if you're pasting them in in a template like i do here with my uh, snapshots um, hold down option key this is on a mac eval and as i said this is because this was pre hot codes that didn't work so let's put in the hot codes one hold down Option eval, and there we go. It evaluates your, so that's a good way to check before you actually apply the, uh, if you're using a stationary pad, uh, metadata, metadata um, template, uh, before you apply it to one, you can check it with the eval. Um, this is just uh, the, the IPTC info, and so that's uh, working on that one single photo. So let's set it. And uh, so I guess that's it. I know a lot of people had been asking about what the, what was the deal with hot codes. Um, that's the run through. Uh, next week, I don't know what. I'm definitely going to have a special guest. I got a few people in mind, uh, but it'll be someone cool. We'll go through another workflow, uh, maybe a workfolio review. Um, and if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to contact me directly. I'm Mick at camerabits.com. Um, let's see. Alt key on Windows for the uh, the modifier key. In fact, I was just looking at these. I'd have to check the documentation. I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's Alt, but I don't know. In fact, let me see if I can look that up here. <laughs> Quick. Uh -huh. key. Yeah, I can't find that right off the top of my head, but I believe it is alt. Um, I'll, uh, I'll post the link to the documentation that has that in there after I look it up. I don't want to hold everyone up. Oh, Arctic uh, says option Mac alt win. That's good. Oh, David just checked. He said it's shift. That's, uh, that's good. I'm sorry I, I didn't know that off the top of my head, but I'm glad you found it. Uh, shift on Windows. All right, let me uh, turn myself back on here. Just what's up, everyone? Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to end the stream, but I will see you next week. Thanks a lot, and uh, have a great week.